Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Audio and video coming through. Fantastic. I hope you all had a great trading day. I know we had an amazing trading day in the room today. Knocked it out of the park. Awesome. Well, um, I want to do a couple quick reminders for you. Okay? And right now you should just be seeing a web page. That's the screen that it's on. Okay? Ah, okay, hold on one second. Let me change it on over for you. There you go. That's a little better. <laughs> um, all right, so want to remind everybody that we have the automation software that is available that we've been using as semi-automation and combining that with analysis in order to allow you to quickly take trades in case you're distracted or the markets are moving fast. To get access to that, go to apexinvesting.com forward slash automate. And we have a 30-day free trial for our sniper trading boot camp where you can get in and get access. Just uh, log on to apexinvesting.com or hop on to apexinvesting.com and click on the banner to sign up for that. Also, next Tuesday at 9 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a webinar on the automation with talking about tips and tricks and mistakes that traders make. So make sure you're on that. Um, with that, I want to go ahead and welcome our special guest tonight, something that I know a lot of y'all had request for, which is the ability to um, you know, learn a little bit more about you know, taxes and how to take advantage of that with trading. And you know, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. Would y'all agree with that? It's not just about what you make, it's what you keep. I want to see if a few of y'all paying attention. All right, so there we go. So would you like to deduct as much as legally possible? Is that something that would be a nice goal? Okay, so that's what we're talking about tonight. It's figuring out what is possible for you to deduct as a trader. Things like healthcare, educational expenses, things like that. Obviously, I'm not an expert on this, so I can't do a webinar on this. But I brought in Rob Green from Green Trader Tax, and I'm going to hand over the presentation to him, and he's going to talk to you about tax deductions, trader tax status, corporations, all sorts of things like that, and be here to help you know answer some questions for you as well. So with that, let me go ahead and change the presenter on over to him, and we'll get it started, okay? All right, right Daryl. Thank you very much. You bet. Glad to be here with the Apex Investing people. And I heard great things about you. I, I know a lot of our clients at Green Trader Tax use Apex. I heard good things from my partner, Darren Nishwander. So let's get started. It's tax season. You're working on your tax returns for last year. A lot of what we discussed today you can use for your 2019 tax return. Other things you'll do for 2020. So here are the top trader tax strategies. And thank you, Daryl, for coining that title. It's a good one. Uh, here's a current photo of me. And I am the CEO of Green Trader Tax, a CPA, and also managing member of our CPA firm, Green, Neuschwander, and Manning. We focus on traders and investment managers. I'm an authority on trader tax, special rules unique to traders, different from other types of taxpayers. I also write for Forbes and our annual trader tax guide. It's I've been doing it every year since 1997. It's very well reviewed and, and received each year. You'll see me in all the leading media at the Traders Expo and at leading uh, brokerage firms webinars like IB every month. Uh, our firm does tax compliance preparation of your return, federal and state, planning for the year ahead. We do like accounting for securities, uh, consultations with me. Do you have trader tax status? Should you elect mark to market, make the Forex election? How should you treat the tax treatment? That's all with me. My partners focus on the tax compliance. And then if you need an entity, if you want to deduct health insurance and retirement, you need the S Corp then you set that up with us as well. And if, lastly, if you have a problem with the IRS or the state, we fight to win and represent you. We have a virtual communication process. Everything is best practices, cloud, uh, encrypted. It's all easy to work with nationwide, worldwide. 
So it's, it's extremely modern and secure. Uh, today, it's informational, informa uh, educational information. It's not one-on-one -on -one tax advice. You might need that. You'll do that with me. We're not financial planners. We're not investment managers. When you need help, you go to a person who has a license in the area you need help in. Uh, me, Robert Green, and Green Companies, we are not affiliated with Apex Investing. Thank you, Daryl Martin, to inviting us for tonight. You bet. Uh, we're going to cover trader tax status. That's a term that I coined years ago. What it means essentially is it's, it's the first linchpin of all the benefits. It's business expense treatment, but much more. And Daryl told me that most of the Apex traders are doing three round trip trades, day trades a day. That's six total trades. TTS is looking for four. So right off the bat, you're looking really good on TTS. Frequency of four days a week, you got five, most of you. Holding periods under 30 days, you got day trades. You're looking good on the big three, but stay tuned. There's a lot to discuss. We'll also cover tax treatment on securities. It differs than tax treatment on futures, and I know most of you trade futures. Fantastic. There's lower 60-40 capital gains rates that you know about. There's also a lost carryback election. A lot of you might trade options. Some of you might trade options. There's options on futures. There's options on stock index futures. Those are 1256. But there's also equity options and options on ETF, securities ETFs, which are securities. Securities have those dreaded wash sales, and we recommend the 475 on securities to get out of the wash sales. But we don't necessarily recommend 475 on futures because then you don't get the lower 60-40 rates. We're, we're just, I'm just touching these concepts to whet your appetite. All the details are coming shortly. We're going to get this done within the hour, including your questions. Now, if you're paying for health insurance, because half of you are full-time traders, you have health insurance, you might not have coverage through a spouse. You want a deduction. Trading is not earned income. You can't deduct health insurance. You need an S-Corp to pay wages to do it. And if you want a high deductible retirement plan, like up to 63500 for age 50 or older, in a solo 401k, you need the S-Corp. Let's start with trader tax status. Now, with eligibility, you're going to get many benefits that investors do not get. You can deduct trading business expenses. There's a whole long list of those. We'll talk about some of them. Startup costs. You can go six months back. So let's say you get started with Apex in January. You got started. And you were in training. You might be live already, but some of you might go up to six months. And then you start in July. Well, you can go back to January 1st to capitalize your Apex costs to then amortize in the business under Section 195. Home office is one of the biggest deductions of all, but you need exclusive use. And most traders, when you have four monitors, five monitors on a desk, several computers, you don't let the kids or the guests fool around with that. You cordon off an area in your apartment or home, maybe a separate room, doesn't have to be a separate room, and you get that really significant home office deduction. Now with TTS, you can elect 475. It's good for securities. Exemption from the wash sale losses. You don't have wash sales with 1256 contracts, but you do on securities. And it exempts you from the capital loss limitation. Lose a lot of money. You can offset it against your spouse's wage income, your wage income, other income. Now with 475 under the new tax law, you can also get a 20% qualified business income deduction. Make 100, write off $20,000 if your taxable income is higher than that. It, there's all sorts of haircuts. Now, you could elect 475 on 1256, but I think you're better off with the lower 6040 capital gains rates than the QBI deduction. And then again, with TTS in an LLC that elects S corporation tax treatment as a pass-through entity, there's no extra entity taxes, it can arrange to deduct the health insurance without any offsetting payroll tax and that high deductible retirement plan contribution. So you might have 20,000, 30,000, 15,000 of business expenses. Health insurance could be 12,000, could be 24,000 for a family. The retirement plan could be 57,000 or 63,500 if you're over age 50, if you make enough money to do it. 
you're talking about some nice deductions here. Now, how do you qualify for trader tax status? Now, we're going to go over later on again how investors get no, no deductions. And all those deductions I talked about, investors don't get any of it. Now, how do you qualify for trader tax status? Here are the big three factors first. Substantial volume. I'm looking for four total trades per day. That's two round-trip day trades, a buy and a sell, two total trades. You might have three buys in a day and one sell. You might have four buys in one day and four buy sells the next day. Now, most of you, I understand the day trading, so it, it's better. So it sounds like you're over the volume. Frequency, I'm looking for a trade execution close to four days per week. So we use 75%. Now, if you have trades all five days of the week, that's 100%. Between four and five is between 80 and 100 I just don't want you three days a week. I want you closer to four. You can have your vacations, your personal days, your holidays. I don't want sporadic lapses. You know, trade one month, visit the grandchildren one month, trade one month, go on a golf vacation one month. I want it. This is a job. This is a business. The average holding period needs to be under 31 days. You can have some outliers over, but the average is under. If you're day trading, that's easy to do. You're good on the big three. That goes a long way. Time, I'm looking for four hours a day. That's, you know, market hours, pre, post, research, administration, trading, software, everything. All time included. You want to keep some good records of your time. If you're a West Coast trader, you, you're trading the morning session before you go to work. If you're East Coast and you're trading the East Coast markets, you still may have time in the morning, during the day, at night. If you're full-time, you easily meet the rules. Even part-time traders usually easily get four hours. There is no material participation standard that we have with the passive activity rules because trading is not a passive loss activity. So intention, you got to have the intention to run a business, to make a living, could be a supplemental living if you have a full-time job. Maybe you're planning to go full-time down the road. If you tell me it's an investment activity, it's not a business, then even if all the other factors are good, you don't have TTS. you got to have the intention to run it as a business and have a serious business setup, multiple trading devices, monitors, uh, m mobile devices, the home office, it, the trappings of a business. When the IRS went to visit one of our clients in California recently in an exam, my partner was telling this story on a webinar yesterday that we did for IB, that recording's on our website. He told the story, the, the agent was blown away when he looked at that, all those monitors and computers and all that goes into trading. I mean, it, it's very impressive. So show that if it ever comes up to the IRS and deduct it on your return to show you have it. Don't shy off the home office. And it should be a material business. Now, you need $25,000 to be a securities patent day trader. It's different for futures. You can have less money. $5,000 is not going to impress the IRS. We look for at least $15,000 accounts. So if you have a mini Forex account, that's not really good enough. Now, we might be able to capitalize some of your education expenses, equipment, to build up that number and not just have it look to the account especially if you don't have a lot of other money. But if you're a millionaire, you're not going to impress the IRS with a $5,000 account size. So go over to our website, click on this blog post, which brings up the website, Green Trader Tax is a tax center. And so, so here's the website. And it goes through a lot of the factors, but we, we're doing that in this PowerPoint as well. And in on the website, you'll be in the Trader Tax Center. You'll see blog posts, where, where, still a lot of details. Robert, where's the link for that blog post? Can you go well, back to that real quick? Yeah, so right, you can just go to greentradertax.com. Maybe you can post that up there, there uh, greentradertax.com. Okay. And when you're on the website here, just to quickly show you all, the key thing is the cutting edge blogs. And so you see the latest blogs, and then you go over to the blog history in the event history. And under the tax center, there's a lot of information here, like whole trader tax status right down the line. And a lot of this is excerpted from the guide. 
So you get the free content, you like it, you want more, then you go to the guide, then you have questions and you come over and you do a consultation with me, then you're a client of ours, and then when you need compliance, you're ready to work with us. So that's how we work. That's how we roll. Awesome. Uh, so here's what doesn't qualify for TTS. An automated trading system created by an outside vendor. What do I mean here? Let's scroll down to the third bullet point. Investment manager makes the trades. So in some of the old tax court cases on trader tax status, in the old days, you used to have a broker. You had a nice relationship. The broker made all the trades. They didn't have to make a lot of trades. There was expensive commissions. You did nothing. You had an outside manager. Now, investment management is big business. So all the brokers are going to zero commissions. Unless you're using a lot of software, then it's not zero. But investment management is big, and people turn it over to an investment manager. Well, if an investment manager makes all the big three numbers, there's no trader tax status because you're a client, investor, and the manager is in the business of investment management. There is no trader tax status. Now, if there's a hedge fund and the investment manager is a partner, they can bring trader tax status to the fund. So this is the concept. It's trades are done by someone else. I like to use the analogy of a plane. You have to be the pilot. Of course, you know how to fly the plane as a pilot. If it's a, it's a, if it's a Boeing 747 or whatever it is, I don't want to bring up Max, but of course you're using automation. You got to use automation. I mean, things are so complicated these days to be a, a, just a manual trader on your own when 85% of the volume is AI, you, you got to have your tools. So you got to be a pilot. You you went to school, you learned how to fly the little plane, now you're flying a bigger plane, there's automation. You can't be the passenger in the cockpit. You have to be the pilot. Now, if you are the pilot and you put on your music and you watch a TV show and you don't do anything, and the, everything goes up and down, and the whole thing is done by the AI and the, and the systems day in and day out, the IRS is going to say, well, you know, you're not a pilot. You're a passenger. So you got we've got to use some common sense here. So here's how we break it down. And then you got to break it down a little bit more with Daryl and John. And I was just talking to them about it before we got this going tonight. So an automated trading system created by an outside vendor. That's like an expert advisor in Forex. That, that's how it first popped up on my screen years ago, the, the FX expert advisor. I noticed here are these clients. I, say, I go through the TTS questions, and how many trades did you make? Oh, I made 5,000 trades. Oh, that's a lot of trades. Good, good. How many hours a day did you spend? Oh, I didn't spend any time. I said, I spent 15 minutes. I spent 30 minutes. Well, how did you do 5,000 trades in 15 minutes? I didn't do the trades. I use an expert advisor. It does everything. I do nothing. Well, you don't have trader tax status. Now, from what I understand from Daryl and John is they, they have a semi-automated system. Let me just uh, bring up my notes here that I made over here. They have a trade semi-automation system with analysis. Long and sh or short according to rules in the software and the ATS makes and executes the trade. The trader makes many decisions. Daryl will explain that. So, Daryl, let's talk about that a little bit now uh, that yeah. we were talking before. It, you, you probably can agree with me, Daryl, that someone with a pure, fully automated trading system where they did nothing. And then you got to bring to the question, are they really an investment manager getting paid for investment advice and, and have the legal liability? Or, or are you really just putting out some tools to help them hone their skills as a pilot. So tell me how you think it's looking good for them on TTS now. Well, I think one of the great things is, you know, not being purely automated. And that's actually one of the things we teach is to not use the pure automation, use semi-automation. Actually helps you qualify for the, you know, the, uh, the uh, TTS. And because what you do is you're choosing, is, the, is it long or is it short? Is the trend going up? Is the trend going down? Is it divergent? Are we in a range? Should I turn it off due to market conditions? You're actively in front of the charts, still making analysis decisions. You're just using the tool to help you get in when the market's fast, or maybe you're distracted reading inside the trading room. 
but you're not just like turning the thing on, walking away, and doing nothing all day. Uh, Daryl, are you telling me that this is like a doctor that's using a robot sitting next to the patient five yards away, over hovered over a computer type situation, making decisions about the operation, but because the entry point of the needle is so fine past the human eye that the that the computer has to help them into it and out of it. Exactly. Perfect analogy. So I think, Daryl, it would be good if, if you... And, and also, if you look at all of our traders, there may be 100 trades, 200 trades in a day. They're taking maybe three, and they're all choosing what three they take. So you put a... The, the IRS, well, the IRS not going to do anything. If they, compare, help, if but, they but, compare 200 traders, they would all have different results because they would all be taking different trades. Okay. So that's the key thing. And I think everyone is, understands the analogies and the concepts here. Now, when you come to me for a consultation, I'm going to interview you. And I've worked with other companies as well. And this may be what Daryl's putting out, but some of you may be sitting back and thinking you're doing very little. You got to impress me that you're doing a lot. You might have the numbers, but you got to have also the work product. Now, the next bullet point is a trade copying service where some people go out there, they're like, they give people access as a fly on the wall. They have a service that you just, you know, press a button and you mimic out everything that's done. You copy the trades. And Daryl says it. What they offer is not a trade copying service. Correct. And and people are not adhering strictly to what's put out. So it sounds more like that doctor doing the AI surgery to me or the robotic surgery. Yeah, that's a um, great analogy. Okay, good. Um, so now if you trade in a retirement plan, that doesn't count. So if you got a retirement plan and a taxable account side by side, when I ask you the numbers for total trades, I only want the taxable account. I don't want the segregated investments and I don't want the retirement account. All right, let's, you got the TTS. What do you get for it? You get business expense deductions first. Tangible personal property. That's an IRS term up to 2500 Used to be everything had to be depreciated. You had to capitalize it, depreciate it, use for life, Section 179, bonus, accelerated, pain in the neck. Now, just like supplies, that computer's $2,200. You write it off just like a supply with a personal, tangible personal property. There's a little sentence you should add to your tax return to do it. If it's three thousand dollars, no problem. You get a hundred percent one seventy nine depreciation. They really increase the full expensing with the latest tax law. For big business, it gets huge dollars. Traders, you're talking about peanuts. Even if it's ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, that's peanuts in America compared to other businesses, which were capital intensive. And if you don't get one seventy nine depreciation, which requires trading income or wages, then you get a hundred percent bonus depreciation. Lastly, you'll get regular depreciation. You're going to get the write-off. You can bring the older computer and monitor to the business. We can look at the fair market value. We can look at the undepreciated amount, capitalize it for expensing. We'll just do the personal property expensing. Amortization expensing, that's your soft costs. That's your software, and that's your startup costs. That's your education costs. Because, you know, education is a very tricky thing. Education... After you have TTS, so let's say you have your TTS and then you're paying for education, that's to maintain and improve your existing business. It's a business deduction. If you go to school to learn a new career, like to be a CPA or a doctor or a lawyer or an MBA, that's not deductible at all. But, you know, training for trading is not quite like going to college. We think it fits into sector 195 for investigating and inquiring about a business. So a lot of these expenses can be gathered up, capitalized, going back six months, amortized up to 5,000 the first year, the rest over 15 years. If you exit after two, three, four, five years, you write off the balance. So really put some good thought into education. I write a lot about this education in Green's 2020 Trader Tax Guide, including writing about the accrual method versus the cash method. Let's say you pay 10,000 with Apex for a lifetime. You take some classes 
and then you'd qualify for TTS and take a bunch more classes with accrual. The ones that you took after you started could be a business deduction after, whereas with the cash method, you couldn't do that. So read the guide, get the guide. It's really good. You'll make a lot of money with the guide. It's, it's a great value. Uh, it's a whole chapter on the expensing. Uh, here are some of the other expenses, your publications, subscriptions, market data, charting, self-created automated trading systems, cloud computing, uh, professional services. So if, if you have a semi-automated system that's part of your TTS with Apex, that's an expense. Um, your professional services, accountant, attorneys, you know, the new tax law said no more tax prep deductions on Schedule A. Not a problem for our clients because they deduct our payments to us as a business expense. Chat rooms, mentors, coaches, supplies, media, communications, travel, meals, entertainment is out now. Seminar under the new tax law. Seminars. Let's say you come to Traders Expo in New York City in early March. I'll be there speaking on tax. At our live event next month. Great. Your live events. You got the TTS. The business trip is deductible. You stay a few more days afterwards for pleasure. That part's not deductible. The IRS is pretty strict about uh, travel. But do it according to the rules and get some great deductions. Conferences, supplies, assistance, office rent. A lot of traders have home office, but you can have outside office. You can have both. And consultants. Home office is one of the best deductions. We covered that before. You can get your taxes and interest above the salt limitation from Schedule A. You can still get the gain on the sale of the home. These days, it's hard to get a gain on the sale of the home. Um, you know, exclusion. Uh, now, also your margin interest expense. That's not limited to investment income as an itemized deduction. And stock borrow fees, if you're a short seller on securities, I don't know if you have any short sellers, uh, uh, Daryl. Um, so with TTS and the S-Corp, you need the S-Corp for this, then you also get your health insurance premiums the HSA, you can do even without the earned income, but the health insurance premiums, you need the S-Corp wages, and the retirement plan, you need the S-Corp wages. If you're an investor, either because you don't hit the numbers that Apex helps you hit, uh, or, you know, you let's say you were, you're an Apex trader for 2020, but you were an investor in 2019, you got crushed in a new tax law. There are no more mis uh, certain miscellaneous itemized deductions subject to the 2% floor. They're all suspended. That includes investment fees and expenses, your unreimbursed employee business expenses, those job expenses, the tax compliance, all gone. There's only two things left for investors. Investment interest, limited to investment income, the excess is a carryover. And for your short sellers, the stock borrow fees as an other itemized deduction. That's it. If you're an investment manager and you have a separately managed account, it's, so you're a great trader with Apex. Now your friends and family want you to trade for them. And you're going to charge them 2% management fee and 20% incentive fee. And you're going to be an exempt CTA because you have under 15 clients. Uh, and they're going to pay you these advisory fees, and they're going to get all the 60-40 benefits on the futures. You're going to have ordinary income for all the advisory fees, but they're going to get no deduction at all. So they might be better off in a commodity pool, a hedge fund, where you get a carried interest so that they, instead of having no deduction, they just have a lower capital gain. That went a little off the slides. We can always do that on another session some other time down the road if there's any interest. Let's take a break for five seconds. Let me drink something. <laughs> also, if any of you trade crypto, he could help you out with that as well, just as a side note. Well, I took crypto out of the slides because you say you don't have a lot of crypto traders because I know we have we, a lot of content here. We, we don't, but I just wouldn't have mentioned that you are able to help okay. with that. Yeah, and there's a new question on your tax return on Schedule 1. If you ha even touched crypto, you got to say yes to that question. Otherwise, you're in hot water. So be aware of that. The IRS okay. is really starting to bust the crypto traders. A lot of people haven't reported. They did inappropriate reporting. There's been a whole bunch of letters sent out about it. My partners on the task force at the AICPA were really on top of it all. Securities. Now, most of you are trading futures, so we'll go through securities quickly. It's ordinary rates, short-term long-term wash sale loss adjustments, counting challenges. You should be glad you're trading futures. 
So your U.S. and international equities, equity options, now base indexes, options on ETFs, securities ETFs, volatility ETN, debt instruments, bonds, the like. You know your securities. It's a realization method, so you can defer a capital gain at your end, or you can do your tax law selling. It's not mark to market like futures. Short term capital gains use the ordinary rates. The long term rates are significantly lower. Uh, it's 0% in the lowest two brackets, 15% in the middle brackets, 20% in the top brackets. You got to hold for 12 months. And with capital loss carryovers, you carry them forward for life. Uh, you, don't, you don't lose them. You're limited to 3000 against other income, but it's unlimited against capital gains. So if you have a capital loss carryover of 100000 and the next year you make ninety, you wipe out the whole ninety. then you have 10 left, you're limited to three, you carry over seven to the next year. So uh, war sales, royal pain in the neck for traders. So good to trade futures for Forex and not be worried about war sale loss adjustments. Most people don't even know they have a wash sale headache. Um, you know, if you if you take a loss and buy it back 30 days before or after the wash sale loss kicks in. For example, you sold Symbol X 12-15-2019, repurchased a substantially identical position in Symbol X equity or equity options on January 10th. That's within 30 days. So the 2019 loss was deferred to the cost basis of 2020. You got hit with phantom income and maybe a phantom income tax bill for 2019. And it's really annoying. It's hard to figure out what's going on with it all. The broker doesn't let you look under the hood of the 1099. You got to avoid wash sales. You got to either break the chain. You took that loss in December. You didn't get back in for 31 days. Uh, or you got you got to watch out for wash sales throughout the year with the IRA accounts. Because the wash sale is supposed to be calculated across all your accounts, including IRAs, your account, your spouse's account, your IRAs. Brokers only do it on the one account. So the rules for brokers are different than the rules for taxpayers. So you got to read all our content. There's a tremendous amount of content on this. You need trade accounting software. What a pain in the neck. I think you guys are really smart to trade futures and bypass this whole disaster. So... 475 is your ticket out of war sales. That's one of our claim to fame is green trader tax. I went out in 1997 and really told people to do it. It was free to do. It gives you the ordinary loss treatment. You lose 100,000, a million, you write off the whole thing. You used to do an NOL carry back, get a big check, replenish your trading account. It was an incredible thing. Now there's no more NOL carry back. But they did add this 475 QBI deduction. But I don't think you should go for 475 because giving up 6040, I think, is better than the QBI deduction. And the QBI deductions only if you don't make a lot of money. You make too much money, you don't get the QBI deduction. I'd rather you get 6040. So if you want for now, let's say you trade mostly futures, but you also trade securities, you make the 475 election on securities only, so you don't have to be burdened with the war sales. Tax loss insurance, exempt from wash sales, exempt from the ordinary law, capital loss limitation. There is a new excess business loss limitation where you, there's certain, you know, 410, 255 single, 410 uh, married. Um, you probably want to, five, excuse me, 510 and, and, and 255. So otherwise, if you're over the excess business loss with the, four, so you lost a lot in securities. You have 475. You have a lot of expenses, health insurance, and retirement. You're single. Your loss altogether is 300. You're limited to 255. The other 45 is an NOL. So that's a new thing in the new tax law, a new limitation on business losses. If you're trading futures, you're probably not going to trigger that. By the way, Forex ordinary income or capital gains income, depending on which you elect, Forex is also not 475, not QBI. So QBI is only securities 475. Now, let's get into the meat of 1256 contracts because that's what a lot of 85% of Apex people are doing. Uh, enjoy lower 60-40 capital gains rates. 
summary tax reporting, no line by line reporting, easier mark to market accounting, no wash sales. What does it include? Your U.S. regulated futures contracts, your RFCs on your U.S. Commodity Exchanges Qualified Board of Exchange, QBEs. Options on those U.S. RFCs. Usually options look to the underlying for its tax treatment. U.S. broad-based indexes made up of 10 or more securities, also known as stock index futures. So your your S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000, those indexes, ESNS. You see it says index. You see it shows a commodity exchange. These are not ETFs. These are not exchange-traded funds. The S&P 500 ETF, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, they're very similar to the index. The ETF is similar to the index, but the ETF trades on a securities exchange. It is a security, a regulated investment corp, whereas the stock index future is on a, is an RFC on a commodity exchange. Now, if the if it's a narrow base index of nine or fewer, then it's micro and it acts more like a security, so it is a security. But there's very few of those. Most are ten or more. The Nasdaq 100, the S and P 500, the Russell 2000. So most are. Broad-based indexes, most of your stock index futures. And then, of course, your options on those st- those broad-based indexes. Now, what about your foreign futures? I mean, you know, you're, you're trading in the U.S. You're a U.S. trader. You open up certain accounts, certain platforms like IB, you have access to the world. You could be in the whole world's part of this game now. There's a lot of foreign futures. Some of them went out and they were bragging that they had a CFTC no action letter that they could market to Americans, and they thought that that gave them 1256 treatment because they acted like an American commodities exchange. I'm thinking of the French exchange. We contacted them and said, no, you can't use 1256. You're giving your clients the wrong information. You need to get a revenue ruling from the IRS granting 1256 treatment. We'll go over that a little later. There's only six exchanges that have that, like Urex, uh, Li- Ice, we'll go through it. It's, it's a short list, and uh, a lot of people aren't on that list. Now, there's the lastly, there's a catch-all, non-equity options. Now, this this can be abused. This means it's an option, and it's not on an equity. So I think Nadex said to themselves, "Hey, we're an option. It's not on an equity. It's on a currency. It's on an index." So we're a non-equity option, and we're 1256, but we looked, took a close look, and we said, well, not so sure. Are you really an option? It, it really doesn't have optionality. That's very quirky. It's an old blog post on that. So if you get a 1256 contract, 1099B from Nadex, you want to use it, go ahead and use it. You want to question it because it's a big currency loss, and you want ordinary loss treatment, then contact us. Non-equity option, I'll give you a good example of that. Your CBOE listed option on a volatility ETN that's uh, a prepaid forward contract. What's that? The broker says it's a security on the 1099B. We think it fits the term of a non-equity option for 1256. Not every 1099B should be taken as a, as, as the gospel. I mean, we take a close look at these things in our content. So 1256 contracts will also include options on commodity ETFs. So if you're trading QQQ, that's a securities ETF, you're trading USO commodities ETF, that's a publicly traded partnership. That's not a security. That's a non-equity option. So we think we 1256 options on your precious metals ETFs, so option on the GLD, options on the volatility ETNs I just explained. Now if you're trading Forex, forwards and you make the opt-out election into capital gains treatment and you're trading in the major pairs for which regulated futures contracts exist on the CME, we make a case for 1256G and we make a case further for spot forex. We'll cover that later. 
Forex LTC options were barred from 1256, and then the IRS flip-flopped and added them to 1256. So I went through this in detail because a lot of you are 1256 traders, and there may be more things than you realize at 1256 and some things that are not that you thought were. So here's the great tax treatment that goes with it. Lower 60, 40 tax rates. 60% is a long-term capital gain subject to the lower long-term capital gains rates. 40% is taxes ordinary income, but it's still a capital gain. So there are significant tax savings throughout the income brackets. Now, let's take a look at that for a second. Let's go over to our tax center, scroll down to tax treatment, bring that up, scroll down to 1256, and let's go down to this table at the bottom. So if you're in the lowest 10% bracket or the lowest 12% bracket, like under 78 married filing joint, you left your job or you're single, you don't have a lot of income, you got a standard deduction, you didn't make a lot of money, what's the long-term portion, the 60%? Zero. What's the short-term portion? 4.8%. 4 you're paying 4.8% versus a 7.2% rate if you weren't, if it was just ordinary income. So look at the savings on these blended 60-40 rates. At the top bracket, it's 10.2% less. At the 35% bracket, it's 12% less. Go back and take a look at those blended rates. They're fantastic. It's mark to market, meaning the unrealized and realized. It all comes out on that 1099B, the aggregate profit or loss. You take that number, you just put it right on the form 6781 part one. Got a big loss in 2019 from trading futures. You can check the box on top of Form 6781, do a three-year carryback only against 1256 gains. Check with us. We can help you with those amended returns on a 1045. Let's go now to uh, options quickly. It's diverse, simple outrates, complex trains, multiple legs. Your options, taxes, securities, equity options, options on now base index, options on securities, ETFs, general rule. Let's check the time, see how we're doing. Okay. Options listed on QB are 1256 unless the reference is a single stock or now base stock index. Securities ETFs are like equities in this context. So you're looking to the underlying. It's an equity option. It's taxed like the equity. Options on 1256, we covered that already in the last screen. Three things happen with uh, outright option trades, closing trade, option expires, you exercise, gets very special rules on holding period. It, I want you to read this blog post about it. Tax treatment can be tricky. So maybe, uh, Daryl, what I can do is send you the, a PDF of these slides uh, tomorrow. You can post it or something and people can click on these links and go through the slides if you'd like. Uh, exchange or whatever. Exchange traded funds. Yeah, I security can put it with the webinar under the webinar section. I'll put the link under there too. Good, good. Uh, exchange traded funds, securities, commodities, precious metals. They use different structures. Tax treatment varies. Sell a securities ETF like the QQQ. It's like selling a, a security. You got wash sale loss adjustments. If you have 475, it applies. We had one client one year lost a half a million dollars in VXX. He has 475, TTS trader, client of ours for many years. He planned to use 475. He couldn't use the 475 on VXX. It's not a security. It's a prepaid forward contract as an ETN. You got to sort this out. Commodities ETF, fine. You treat it like a security, realization method. You get a K1. You pick up your K1 income. But you got to adjust your cost basis. Otherwise, you're going to double count the K1 pass-through income. A lot of local accountants miss it. That's not on the first page of the K-1. Give your accountant the entire K-1 package. Otherwise, you're going to double count some income. You use trade log software. That's not going to pick up the K-1 adjustment. That's not part of your download. Now, the precious metal ETF, that doesn't use publicly traded partnership. It uses a publicly traded trust. That's a that's a grantor trust. That's like a that's like you're you own the gold, the bullion itself. So you get a K-1 passing through some of that treatment. you got to treat it like a collectible. Cover that below. Other financial instruments, you got your foreign futures, precious metals, volatility products, 
So the foreign futures, remember, you got to get the, the revenue ruling. You got Eurex, Life, Ice Futures, Europe, Ice Futures, Canada. You'll go to the link on our website under tax treatment, and you'll see E&Y puts out an exhaustive list every year. It hasn't really changed over the last few years. So precious metals are collectibles. There's, if you get the law, instead of the top rate, it's really your ordinary rate capped out at 28%. So instead of a capital gains rate in the top bracket at 20%, you're paying 28%. So that's if you hold it for 12 months. Short term is the regular ordinary rate. Uh, so we touched on the volatility already. Uh, let's talk about Forex now, because I know uh, a bunch of you are also 15% or so, or 10% of you are trading Forex. It's ordinary gain of loss treatment. That's nice. You have your cake and eat it too. You lose 25000 you write it off against your wages from earlier in the year, or you still have the job or your spouse's wages. No capital loss limitation. Wonderful thing. Got ordinary income? Not a big deal. It's sort of like a short-term capital gain. Ordinary income. What's the problem? Well, you start off with that treatment, and traders can make or retract a capital gains election at any time during the year on a good to cancel basis. So you've been trading, making money in Forex in the interbank market year to date, you're up 20,000. But I'm telling you that if you're trading the Euro dollar or the yen dollar or the, or the a major currency, if you make the capital gains election, you can treat it like futures with the lower 60, 40 rates and pay a lower tax rate. Or if you have a capital loss carryover, which you're looking to soak up, you're not going to soak it up with 4X ordinary income. Why not consider the capital gains election even on the miners? So you're interested in unlocking 1256G on the major pairs or the ca using up capital losses. So you make the capital gains election. So what I want you to do on Forex, I only had a little content in here, is go over to the tax center, go over to tax treatment on financial products, go over to Forex. We have a, we've, we've been a leader on Forex for a long time. Forex used to be a lot bigger. It's a lot smaller now uh, with the regulation in Dodd-Frank. Um, so there's a blog post that I want you to read about You'll see it all, it's covered in the guide, and it's also on our blog about a case for the lower 60 40 rates. So I want you to read that so you can find that on the blog. Let's go back to the current slide. Now, we covered trader tax status, we covered tax treatment. Why would you need an entity? You can trade an individual account, get your Schedule C for all your business deductions. You can elect 475 if you're a securities trader. You can file the capital gains election, whether you're a trader or an investor on Forex. You can do all those things as an individual. Why would you need an entity? Well, if you want to deduct health insurance, if you want to deduct a retirement plan, you need a TTS S Corp. Now, TTS partnership might look better than a Schedule C, but does it justify the extra expense of an entity? Maybe not. There are some situations where it may make sense to do it. You may want to check in with me on that. Now, with the S-Corp flat out, you so say you form a single member or spousal member LLC in your home state. No sense doing it in a tax-free state. It's all going to pass through to your home state anyway. you got to register it in your home state anyway if you want asset protection. So you just do it in your home state. You wait until the end of the year. You see if you're profitable, because you could be profitable all year and lose the money in November. If you are, then you put the health insurance on the W-2. And then you say, how much do I want to do to the retirement plan? Do I want to do the 19500 elective deferral, 6500 more if I'm age 50 or older, up to 26000 That's where the biggest tax juice is, the biggest income tax savings versus payroll tax costs, FICA and Medicare. The income tax savings is greater. That's where the biggest savings is. Or do you want to go for the home run and do the profit sharing plan up to 37,500 on wages of 150? You only, the elective deferral is 100% deductible. The profit sharing plan, 25% deductible. I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. Go over to the website, go to the tax center, scroll down to retirement solutions. 
go through all the numbers on the savings here of the solo 401k. So we can set up that LLC for you now through the S Corp election. You'll open up an LLC trading account, and then we can unlock these huge deductions for the rest of the year. And that's something to consider. So let's go over now to the board uh, and see if you have any questions that you've posted on the board. Daryl, I, I wanted people, we forgot to tell them that they could post questions on the board. So, so brief actually, questions, folks. We do actually have some questions and, uh, already Darryl, in here. You, you can see them out of the question section I can see there. It. Yep, I can see them. Awesome. All right. Uh, can we, uh, this is from Todd S. I'm not going to give the last names for a privacy. Todd S, last initial. Can we take standard deduction and trader tax status? That's the beauty of it. You take your investment interest and stock borrow fees off of Schedule A. You take your, your roughly doubled standard deduction, and then you get your full assortment of your TTS expenses from gross income above the line on Schedule C. Rob W., what is the wash sale? We, we went through that, Rob. You probably asked that before you, we got to it. Uh, now, if you're a non-resident alien, Go to our website, go to the blog post for non-resident alien. We did a whole webinar on that, a whole blog post. Capital gains are tax-free. You're only paying withholding on U.S. company dividends. And if they're withholding at the right rate because you tell them what treaty you're entitled to, if there's a treaty with your home country, they'll withhold at the treaty rate. There's nothing to file with the IRS. You're good to go. Uh, Damien C., uh, you mean I do have to think? Yeah. You do, but you're if you're a trader, you are Breck J. Uh, <laughs> Kevin A. Is international travel well? If you say you're going to uh, you're going to the Swiss Alps, the Stad, to go skiing with your trading buddies from around the world, and you spend breakfast talking about trading and all day skiing, uh, the agent who never got outside of his office is not really going to buy it. So you got to use some common sense. Same goes, you're not deducting a Lexus or a luxury uh, uh, SUV with huge depreciation because you're trading from home. you got to use common sense and be reasonable on your deductions. And transfer some of the income to Schedule C to zero it out. Check out our webinar from uh, yesterday on the IB website and on our website too uh, about tax tips for traders uh, for this tax season. Um, Sean C., uh, some technical questions here. Okay, John W., the U.S. regulated futures contracts include commissions. Um, commissions are not separately stated expenses. So they don't go on Schedule C. They don't go on Schedule A. The good news is that they're part of your trading gain or loss. If you have a capital loss limitation, then you have a capital loss carryover, including some of your commissions. So your broker should be taking the commissions out of sales proceeds and adding it to cost basis. Make sure your rebates are picked up too. Make sure there's nothing that falls through the cracks. If there is something, check with us about it. Uh, Matt N. So an option on SPY would be 1256. No, SPY is an ETF and an option is a securities ETF. And, this, and the option on that is a... Uh, Security. So what you do is you type in the symbol, you come back to our website, you come back to Chrome or Google, you Google the symbol. This is how I do it. I Google the symbol. And I want to I wanna look for the Yahoo Finance results. Okay, it looks like it might be up here. And what I'm looking for is, okay, it's a, it's a stock exchange, and it says ETF. Oh. And I know that this is on securities, the S&P 500. It's not like a USO commodity. I can go to the prospectus, but right off the bat, I know it's an ETF. It's a securities ETF. And the end of story, the answer is done. So if, you, if it's an ETN, and you got to go further, then you go to the prospectus. So that's how you handle that. Let me go back to uh, the website, bring that up. Hold on. Hold on. Back to the home page. Let's go back to the questions. All right. I'm going through the questions. Uh, Todd, how, mu how much is the S Corp? Can you have the LLC? So our services 
First, you do the consult with me for 270, 45 minutes to see if you need the entity or not and read more about it in the guide first if you want or on the blog post. I talk a lot of people out of entities because they don't need it and there could be a little bit more cost. If you need the entity, you upgrade to our entity formation service for 425. Our outside attorney is 235 that does all the legal paperwork and the online incorporator is 99. The state filing fee is around 100. So it's under $1,000. And then you have the entity tax return each year for around $1,000 and the payroll service provider for 600 for all the quarterly payroll tax returns on the S-Corp. It's all explained on the website. Click on the entity formation service. Richard G., do I need to have trading accounts under the company name? Absolutely. If the trading accounts are in the individual name, then nothing happened in the entity. That's a huge mistake. Uh, Milton P., how much do I need for the trading account to start? We're looking for 25K, patent day trader securities, 15K futures for TTS. You can have less, but if you want TTS, you want to impress. That's in the TTS rules. Uh, Ronald P., LLC or Inc., don't forget it's a pass-through entity. Passing the income to your individual return where all the regular tax rates apply. There's not a separate rate. Don't trade in the C-Corp. The IRS can think it's an investment company, disallow all deductions, everything's hit with a flat rate of 21%, then they hit you with a 20% accumulated earnings tax if you keep any retained earnings. It could turn into a disaster with double taxation in your state. Read my blog post about the C-Corp. Uh, Randy Allen, we're going to come up to the end soon, and I think I'll get to all the questions soon as well. Uh, Randy L, can you add the S-Corp to an existing LC? No, what, what happens is that the LLC that you have, Randy, whether it's single member or spousal, can make an S-Corp election due by March 15th of this year on the Form 2553. Most states accept the federal election. A few states like New York do not. So don't miss that S-Corp election date going back to January 1st, this March 15th. Uh, Jack K, Nadex 6040, right? I talked about Nadex with the 1099 on that yes they do report with 1256 but read a blog post from us if you'd like search on the blog nadex uh rob again uh just curious why 1099b nadex we discussed that rob uh opportunity zones uh i had a trader said i want to go to opportunity zone and set up a trading business that would not be a qualified business for an opportunity zone but he was. then he said it turned out his wife was going to open up a store in the Opportunity Zone. That might work. So uh -huh. I'm not an expert in Opportunity Zone. We could refer you to lawyers on that. Bruce P., if you have a 401k rollover, uh, which is a, ro a Roth, I excuse me, a rollover IRA, some administrators will allow you to trade futures. Just make sure you never have interest in a IRA because it causes you bit. Uh, and you don't have your IRA check the box, invest in an LLC. That's a prohibited transaction. Read our content on that. You don't want to get busted for doing something wrong there. That's a whole can of worms there. James D., I use AI to trade Forex. If it's an expert advisor and you're putting very little into it, you may not have TTS. So read our guide on that and check in with me on a consultation. Uh, Breck J., if you're a prop trader, you get a, either an independent contractor, and that's a business. That's like being an investment manager. You have your expenses. You're not a retail trader. There is no 6040. There is no wash sales. You're getting advisory fees. If you join the firm as an LLC member, then you do get TTS and all the tax treatment on a K-1. I have a whole chapter in the tax guide on that. Uh, Milton P., is it worth getting an S-Corp for just five trades a week? The S-Corp is for TTS and the health insurance and retirement. If you don't need health insurance for retirement, you can do it as a sole proprietor. I mentioned the guide a few times. That's over here on the right side of the website. You can see the, the trader tax guide. Take a look at that. You can download it and get the paperback as well. That's really very helpful. So if you like our content and want more, get the guide, and then you have questions to do the consult, then maybe the entity, then maybe tax compliance. If you want tax compliance, we only accept clients that are new, that have TTS. So if you have TTS in 2019 and you want us to prepare your returns to get every dollar of expense that you're entitled to, come over to this page, 
do a new client evaluation. There's no charge on that. My partner makes sure you're a good fit for the firm. He looks at your prior year return. Get going on that right away with us. That's our bread and butter service. That's what our whole army of tax pros are really doing day in and day out is tax compliance. We have really great people on that. So come to get to know us. Remember I mentioned the media before. You'll see us everywhere in the media, including all the major publications. So, uh, Daryl, did you want to ask me anything? Did anything you want to discuss that I left out? No, I think you really covered it. I mean, it's, um, one of the biggest things just to point out is the massive advantages to trading tax status, the huge tax, tax advantages of trading futures, which most, most of y'all do. And that's why I wanted to, you know, invite, you know, Robert on was to go over that because a lot of y'all weren't even aware that you can get all these tax breaks. You didn't know that there was ways to set that up and you might still be a little bit lost on what to do to take advantage of it. And so to, you know, give you somebody to go to that is an expert on it and can help you do it and help you, you know, as you hopefully have a very successful year and as you prepare your taxes for last year, um, you know, he would definitely be somebody that you'd want to talk to, to, you know, help you basically save as much money as possible at the end of the day. And um, like I said, it's not just what you make, it's what you keep. And I think that's what green trader tax is there to help you do. And they know what a big thing I want to stress is not your average CPA. They don't specialize in day trading futures and how to set up trading tax status. And, you know, that's not your H&R block. I mean, they, they just, that's not their thing. So if you really want to maximize your savings, you want to go to somebody who actually knows and understands traders and understands the tax law so they can help you maximize it. And I appreciate you being on and helping out and uh, answering all the questions. Thank you very much for taking your time. I know this is a late webinar to do, but I wanted to get as many people on from West Coast and East Coast and, you know, that we could. Thank you so much, Daryl. I appreciate it. All right. Well, you have a great evening, Robert. And everybody at Apex, I will see you in the trading room in the morning. And I'll uh, post this webinar on our website, on our Facebook page, on our Facebook group, and on our YouTube channel tomorrow after we get done with our morning trading session. So check it out. Thank you very much. Good night.